Hello, everyone. Thanks for coming and joining us today. We have some really exciting stuff to talk about. Um, today, we are going to be discussing uh, the intro and project upgrade update to the Network Policy API subgroup to SIG Network. This is an exciting time for us. We've never kind of had a main stage at KubeCon, so we're really excited to tell everyone what we're doing. Um, my name is Andrew Stoikis. I am one of the maintainers for the Network Policy API uh, repo, and I work at Red Hat as a senior software engineer. My name, my name is Dan Winship. Uh, I also work at Red Hat on various OpenShift networking stuff. I'm Surya, and I'm also an engineer working at Red Hat. I contribute a lot to the SIG Network Policy API working group. Happy to be here at KubeCon. Uh, my name is Yang, and I work in VMware um, in terms of container networking and security stuff. And I'm also a part of the work, same working group. So hand it back to Andrew. Sweet. Thanks, everybody. OK, so we just learned a little bit about who we are, um, at least the four of us here. There are more. Um, but what do we do, and where did we kind of come from? So for a long time, um, network policy was just maintained by the core SIG network group. Um, and obviously, it's been a stable API for a long time. I'm sure many of you know it. Who here has, knows about network policy? <laughs> Who here uses network policy on a regular basis? That's a lot of people. I'm awesome. awesome. I'm stoked about that. Cool. So yeah, we basically spawned out of SIG Network as a group who wanted to focus specifically on network policy and focus on the future of it. Because it quickly has become apparent that um, doing the future in core was going to be very difficult. And projects like Gateway API have really kind of led the way in delivering stuff with CRD. So you're going to see a lot of threads that are similar with that project uh, here today. Um, we have a really good group of contributors. Um, you're going to see some actual pictures of them later on in the slideshow, but you can check out all our contributors at this link. Um, so what do we do? We help maintain the legacy network policy resource. That includes documentation work. Um, additionally, we have completely reworked the upstream network policy test suite. That works almost a year and a half old now, but that's what got us started. Uh, we converted it to use full uh, table-driven test design, and I think it helped the community a lot. More recently, we've worked on the admin network policy kept. We actually had a talk yesterday on that, um, and we're going to learn more about it today. And we're going to tell you what we're doing um, in the upcoming year as well. Over to Dan. OK. OK. So a long time ago in a galaxy right here, uh, we created network policy version one. The idea was that developers using Kubernetes had ideas about who they did and didn't want to be talking to their pods. So we have one use case here. As an application developer, I want to control which other users within the cluster can access my application. So you might have you know, two different groups of users. You don't want the people in the other group connecting to your service, so you create a network policy saying only the people in my group can talk to this server. Another possibility, as an application developer, I want to have a multi-tiered architecture where I can control access between pods in each tier. So this is like you have your front-end namespace, your back-end namespace, and your database namespace. And the front-end can talk to the back-end, and the back-end can talk to the database, but the front-end can't talk to the database. And in fact, nobody other than the back-end can talk to the database. And then if a hacker breaks into the cluster, then it, it's limited what they can do because of the policies that you created. Now, one thing that is not a use case for a network policy is, as a cluster administrator, I want to impose my policies on end users in my cluster. Um, back when we, you know, so this was designed in 2016. At, at the time, most Kubernetes clusters, you know, people were scaling up from running Docker. You had a DevOps model where it's just one person deploying their cluster, doing their own stuff. So the administrators and the users were really the same thing. There definitely were people who were starting to play around with clusters with, with more roles. Um, RBAC was actually added in the same Kubernetes release as network policy. But of course, that meant that when we were designing network policy, RBAC didn't exist. There really wasn't a strong concept of administrators versus users in a Kubernetes cluster. And so we couldn't really design network policy to, to differentiate administrators and users and, and provide use cases for the administrators specifically. Uh, so we just said, well, we'll do that later. 
Um, so, so here you can see a sample network policy. I mean, it sounds like all of you know this part already. Um, the example is what I said before. Backend can only can get traffic from the front end. The database can only get traffic from the back end. Um, network policies are namespace scoped, so you create the policy and it sets policy within only that namespace, possibly affecting traffic coming from or going to other namespaces, but always anchored in one specific namespace. Uh, the peers can be pods, namespaces. We, we added CIDR blocks later on that came a few releases after the original network policy. Um, and, and one of the decisions is that the, the API design is, is sort of implicit in nature. You say what you want to allow, and then everything else gets denied. And that worked okay for the original use case of, you know, I want to stop people in this other namespace from getting to my service. Well, you know everybody who you want to be able to access your service, so you can just put all of them in the policy, and then everybody else gets denied, and that works. Uh, for other use cases, that started to become more of a problem. Uh, so it's been a stable API for six years. There are a lot of implementations. We have some pretty icons here. But it has problems, and it has had problems. So, so one is what I was saying, the implicit isolation. The policy specifies what you want to allow, and then everything else gets denied. There, there's no finer grained control. And that makes it hard to, to layer policies, or you can't even like say, I'm going to create a service, and then I'll just throw in a policy that says, these pods are allowed to connect to my service. Because if you do that in a namespace where there weren't any other network policies already, then you've just denied everybody else the ability to talk to your service when you, you might not have meant that. You might have just meant, I want to guarantee that these pods can talk and I don't care about other pods. Um, the fact that there are no explicit deny rules, there's no priority between multiple policies, there are no policies that span multiple namespaces, means that it, it doesn't solve a lot of the use cases that administrators had for the policies that they wanted in a cluster. And, and finally, while it, it works pretty well for pod-to-pod -pod traffic, we never fully nailed down exactly how it works for traffic coming into or going out of the cluster. So for ingress traffic, if you try to apply a network policy to it and say, like, I only accept traffic from 10.0.0.0 slash 8, that CIDR block might get matched to the source of the traffic, or it might get matched to the load balancer that redirected the traffic into your cluster. There's really no way to know for sure, and it's different between different clouds and, and different CNI plugins. Um, likewise, traffic exiting the cluster, because there are so many like different other networking things involved, sometimes it's possible to bypass network policy exiting the cluster by, like say, creating a service and then having the service redirect through a load balancer and things like that. So it's a little bit vague there. So these are all issues that had, had sort of, some of them we realized right away, some of them it, it took us a while, and we realized we need to do something about this. So um, time for a new API. To solve all the problems that Dan just mentioned, the working group decided to open up a cap and look at the numbers. We have 10 plus contributors putting uh, more than 100 individual commits, resolving over 600 um, comments. And the result, is, by the end of the day, you know, if you look on the GitHub PR, um, there are just too many comments to unfold so that the GitHub page will actually get frozen sometimes. But this is just how much effort we have been put um, to get this, PR, uh, get this cap to be merged, uh, which is one year after it's open. So that's why I wanted to give a huge shout out to all the contributors to the cap, which made this all happen. Now, okay, <laughs> thank you. Um, so, so why is this so hard? Um, what made this really hard and uh, to merge? Um, we started out just wanting a cluster scope admin facing and CNI agnostic policy API um, just to solve the problems that Dan mentioned. Now we realized then um, soon that you know we have more work to do. First of all, we did it to consolidate on the use cases. 
there are a lot of people coming in the community um, talk about their use cases where we realize it's just sort of like a single use case. Um, people wanted to say that I wanted to segregate my clusters so there are different networks. I wanted some namespace to be able to talk to some namespace but not the other. And some people come to us and say, I want to each namespace to be isolated um, with each other. We soon realized that that's sort of like the same use case because you basically wanted to support tenancy on cluster um, in some sense, right? Network tenancy on cluster. The other thing is we wanted to be explicit in the API design. Uh, meaning that we don't want it to make the same mistake that the network policy API has made. Um, each rule that uh, the admin network policy has should be read as is and does not have any um, implicit meanings tied to it. And it should also be unambiguous. Um, further along, it, uh, because of um, we wanted to support maybe um, the allow and deny actions, that means that priority modeling is inev inevitable. Right, and um, um, we also wanted to have rule actions uh, on top of allow and deny that actually makes sense to everyone. We were um, proposing some words called delegate, but it didn't sort of like make sense to a lot of people. So that's why there were a lot of iterations in the design of the API we have to went through and make sure the API is actually minimum, but solves all the use cases that we come up with and is also future extensible, which we will show you why, because we have all these cool um, features that we want to add to admin network policy in the later releases. So, starting from the cap, now we're here. Um, we, have, uh, merged, uh, we have two objects, which is the admin network policy and baseline admin network policy that we have in a network policy API, uh, part network policy API repo now. Uh, it is out of tree. We want to follow the success story of the gateway API. And right now, the two um, objects are in alpha, uh, v1 alpha 1. And it supports intra-cluster controls, uh, which in the future, we are also thinking north-south. And we will talk about you know, the enhancements uh, later on in this talk. So the use cases that uh, the admin now policy API is focused on um, you can see there are some major use cases that I think would resonate with a lot of you. Uh, first of all, isolate tenants in the cluster, right? So there are a couple of namespaces that belong to some tenants and other namespaces that belong to another tenant. You want them to not talk to each other, but intra-tenant connection is fine. Um, there's also the always allow ingress or egress to DNS, right? You don't want developers to write a network policy but accidentally block um, access to DNS where they just don't know why. Um, and you will always want to uh, the monitoring to be able to egress to the namespace that you care about. And developers should not be able to block monitoring namespace from collecting telemetry. Uh, finally, there is also a use case where the admin uh, of the cluster doesn't really just care about, um, you know, I shouldn't say doesn't care about, but it, they want to delegate the power for, uh, for the namespace owners to decide what kind of policy um, they want to have for the, for the namespace. And we want to make it explicit, right? So the admin wants to delegate the power of writing the policy to the namespace owner. So those are the things that the admin network policy can do. And um, there's also a baseline admin network policy, uh, which does the following. So in the Kubernetes cluster, by default, uh, you will have one pod be able to talk to each other. That's kind of the, the default security posture of the um, Kubernetes um, cluster, where today you, haven't, you don't have a way to flip it, basically. So what the baseline network policy does is that it gives you an ability for the cluster admin to flip the default network security posture for a cluster so that you can implement something like zero trust. And another use case for that is that if you're delegating policy writing abilities to a namespace owner, well, what if the namespace owner doesn't actually have any network policy in the namespace? You want something, you know, 
default, right? You want something to catch that so that, you know, you don't delegate power to your namespace owner and they just not using it. Then everything just becomes allowed um, by default and maybe you don't want that. So there are different intents uh, of the cluster admin that we're able to capture with these two CRDs. And we have a QR code here, uh, which links to our talk yesterday, uh, where we showcase the admin network policy and baseline admin network policy objects um, in a little bit um, more. So, uh, subtle plug on that, if you're a Harry Potter fan, go check out that talk. <laughs> you will really love it, I promise. Cool. Um, and so the API has been V1 Alpha 1 for over a year, and we are on the journey towards beta, um, which between our working group, we think it's soon, right? So we definitely wanted to, you know, call out, call out for contributions. I think you should, you should probably say that in the, uh, in the later slides. Um, but we already have two implementations for the API already, uh, which is Antria and Oven Kubernetes, uh, who are all open source the CNI projects. And the um, admin network policy API is also on the roadmap of Catechol, CDM, and Kube OVN, um, which we have, you know, their issues um, for tracking admin network policy support listed down there. Okay, so I'm gonna hand it over to Sharia for the cool stuff. So Dan actually talked about our distant past, which was network policies. He talked about the issues that we've had with that API. Yang did a good job talking about our recent past, which was admin network policies. So like he mentioned, I get to do the cool stuff, which is all the forward-looking features that this group has been working on. And we have a lot of cool features lined up, which I'll talk about in a moment. But before that, Yang talked about KEPS, right? So he talked about how painful the Kubernetes enhancement proposal process was. So how many of you have done KEPS? Not that many, good for you, but I do see a few hands here. So, yes, we did. So the core SIG network does CAPS, right? But the subgroups, the Gateway API does GAPS, the Gateway Enhancement Proposals. And as the network policy subgroup, we do NPEPS, the network policy enhancement proposals. So if you want to do a cool feature, want to contribute, and you're unsure what to do, open an issue, open an NPEP, right? So that's how you can get started. And we also have features that don't require NPEPs, so just come and check out our GitHub repo and open NPEPs or open issues, right? So the first NPEP that we have had, which we've been working on for the past few months, is conformance profiles. So Dan talked about all the cool network policy implementations in his slide. It's an extensive list. Even we don't know the full list of implementations that we have for the network policy core API. Yang also talked about the two fresh implementations we have for our admin network policy API. We are expecting more and more implementations in the future, right? So one of the main issues as API maintainers and project maintainers is that we've not really had a proper implementation tracking mechanism in the past. And that is what this network policy enhancement proposal is trying to solve. So it's about coming up with API conformance tests where both the end users, the implementers, work together hand in hand with the API maintainers and are heavily involved in coming up with a set of conformance tests, grouping them into core and extended set of features, depending on the fields in the API. And then we come up with these conformance pro uh, profiles, which helps us report these conformance test results from each of these individual implementations back to our project. So what this essentially gives us is it gives us a way of telling which implementation is using what fields in the API, how is it useful, and we get this consistent feedback loop going, and that actually helps us make our APIs better. So that's the end goal of this NPEP. It's actually already merged into our project, so please check it out, but we also need more help in this area, so you can squ uh, scan the golden QR code right there, the help wanted one. We have tagged them with the area conformance, and there's a lot of first-hand good first issues that you can also check out. So if you're interested in contributing, we do need help, and reach out to me after the talk also if you want to know more about this. And a sample conformance profile test report is shown right over there, where we have the admin network policy profile and the baseline admin network policy profile, right? And it shows you a sample of how the tests are evaluated, how many passed, how many failed, and then you can basically, basically, as an implementation, get a conformance 
badge if you're conforming with our API. The next in pep is about egress. So like Yang mentioned, currently our admin network policy API only supports intra-cluster traffic controls, so east-west pod-to-pod traffic. There have been feature requests for supporting egress also, so northbound. This NPEP is mainly focused on northbound, but there is egress controls outside the cluster from pods in your cluster. And today the API has two sets of egress peers, right? So pods and namespaces. And as a result of, this, of all these discussions, right? So these use cases where you might want to have a case where you don't want your pods to talk to 0.0.0.0, right? So block everything. Or you might have cases where you don't want your pods to talk to nodes in your cluster. So one node or a set of nodes, so you can use node selectors. Or you might also have cases where you want to block a specific CIDR range, allow another specific CIDR range. So basically, egress traffic controls. This NPEP proposes two API fields, um, two new peers for the egress, which is nodes and CIDRs. We are discussing how our CIDR design should look like, whether the CIDR should be egress only, which is outside the cluster external versus should it also have pod ciders or service ciders included. So there's a lot of discussions happening in the NPEP. So if you have interesting use cases for egress, please leave comments on our issue right there in GitHub. The next NPEP is similar to the previous one, but maybe the ciders are not what you want, right? You want fully qualified domain names as your peers with wildcard selector patterns, et cetera. So that's an extension of the previous NPEP. The credit here goes to Rahul, Rahul Joshi. He's been contributing heavily to this NPEP. So shout out to him. He's not here today. But um, so please do check out this NPEP and um, scan, scan the QR code if you want to know more about this. Over to Andrew, who will take us through the rest of the NPEPs. Awesome. Thank you, Surya. Cool. So this NPEP is involving cluster ingress. We talked about cluster egress a little bit. We obviously want to highlight our contributor who owns this, uh, Nadia, who's sitting right here. She's awesome. So let's give her a round of applause. Thank you. Um, and so obviously this seems pretty simple, right? It's like just the flip of egress. But we as a working group have really struggled to find some concrete customer use cases for this NPEP. Um, so this is kind of a call for help. We have an MPEP open. We're trying to get the user stories and use cases together. Um, if you are a user or a customer who can think of reasons that we need ingress um, control and policy and, and an admin network policy sort of subject, please let us know. Um, give us feedback on the NPEP. Come to our meetings. Uh, we are, as always, very open. OK, and again from Nadia, doing a ton of work. Um, on the new NPEP for tenancy. So when we wrote the KEP for this, uh, for admin network policy, we had built in the desire to support certain tenancy-related use cases. Now, when we got to around to actually implementing V1 Alpha 1 of that API, to be honest, it had been a year of, of KEP work, and, and we ended up on a design that we've really not loved. So this is the best part about our MPEP process. We now have a new um, enhanced proposal to in make that design better. Um, and so the problem was specifically the original API allowed like way more expressiveness than was needed. So we're kind of locking it down, making it more explicit with the ultimate goal of making it easier to read for users like you. Um, that's, that's our ultimate goal. So pretty excited about that one. Um, again, Nadia's here. If you have questions, you can ask her after. I'm sure she'll help you out. OK, so this actually isn't an NPEP. This is just an example of a new feature that we have folks working on. Um, part of the KEP for admin network policy included a focus on developer tooling. With the introduction of priorities, with the introduction of new API, API objects, there's a lot of complexity, right? I'm sure we, a lot of us even struggled with network policies to understand, at the end of the day, what is going on with my pod? Like, why is traffic not getting there? Is it a network policy's fault, or is something going on that's more sinister? So this policy assistant is built on an upstream tool called Cyclonus. And its first goal is to create a tool that lets you understand and iterate upon your policies. So it will give you kind of a bash table-like output um, that helps describe your policy so you can understand why traffic is being allowed to your pods or not. Um, 
we have the ultimate goal of turning this into a kubectl plugin, um, but this is really, really important, and the work is just getting started. Shout out to Hunter Gregory from Microsoft. He's not here today, but he's really dove in here and just completely gotten us going. Uh, we're really, really excited about it. At the end of the day, it's also going to help us extend our conformance testing framework. It's going to help us kind of integrate truth table testing for admin network policy. Um, and there's just a lot of other exciting use cases for it. So if you're inside, uh, excited about developer tooling, this is where you can hop in. And for our final topic, I'm sure a lot of people want to hear about is what about network policy v2? Dan's going to hop in and explain. Whew. So before, we were talking about how we had network policy v1, and there were these problems with it. And then we, we created the network policy working group to create admin network policy. We, we kind of skipped ahead a little bit. There, there, originally, the network policy working group, people had this idea of, let's create network policy v2 that will solve all of the problems. And it turns out that we had too many problems, and we had to like scale it down. And that's, that's where admin network policy came from. So and, and admin network policy solves these administrator use cases, but we still have all these other problems with network policy. Uh, the implicit deny is still hard to work with. Um, there are these weird syntactic quirks. I don't know if any of you have ever run into this, but like adding or removing a single hyphen from a network policy can completely change the meaning um, to allow this and this to allow, or allow packets that match this and this to allow packets that match this or this, um, which you know you don't want to mess those up. And network policy makes it very easy to. Um, there's this problem that. When you have probes on a pod for like liveness or readiness, Kubelet needs to be able to send an HTTP request or whatever to the pod. And when we first added network policy, we were like, oh, we don't want to break everybody's probes. So we just added this rule that says, OK, Kubelet can talk to any pod. Um, and that generally ends up meaning that every host network process can talk to any pod. And people don't always want that. And, but we can't change it now, because that would break everybody's probes. So you know, a new version of network policy maybe would let us do something about that. Um, we've been talking about all these extensions that we're making to the original admin network policy plan. It's been hard for us to extend the original network policy because the way it's, it's designed and written makes it so that uh, when you add new things, old implementations might not be able to see them. So for instance, original network policy let you say, only allow connections to port 80 but you couldn't say allow connections from ports 80 to 90. And people wanted to do that. So people created a cap to add a port range feature to network policies. But it turns out that if you just replace the port 80 with port range 80 to 90, then an old implementation would look at that and say, oh, it doesn't say anything about ports. That means that the policy allows connections to all ports, which isn't what you wanted. So we had to come up with this hack where you say port 80 and port 90, which gets the message across, but it's, it's weird. And it took us a while to come up with something and, and convince ourselves that, yeah, this is really going to work. So we're trying with admin network policy to, to not fall into that hole again. But we still, again, have that problem with network policy. So people say network policy v2. Because of the way that versioning works in Kubernetes, we can't actually make networking.cates.io slash v2 network policy and solve all of our problems because it would still have to be compatible with the v1 network policy. So you'd still have to have the implicit deny and all that stuff. Um, but we came up with better network policy for administrators with admin network policy. So could we come up with somehow for better network policy for developers? So this is an idea that we've just started thinking about, uh, but the idea is we could replace network policy with developer network policy, which is a better implementation of the same ideas that had gone into network policy originally. Um, we wouldn't let administrator-focused use cases sneak in, which happened repeatedly in network policy. So we, we could keep it simpler. And you know, we have years of experience now. We know what mistakes we made. We could just not make them. Um, and ensure that we end up with a developer network policy that, that fits between admin network policy and baseline admin network policy to allow all the use cases that everybody needs. And then the idea would be that the combination of admin network policy and developer network policy would, would be essentially network policy v2. Um, and you know we would have to make sure that people could still use old network policies because there are a ton of them around. But we would you know define interoperability, and if you wanted the cool new features, you would just have to use the the new objects. 
Um, and I think, oh, is that you, Andrew? Yeah, sure. Um, so to, just to close it out, I know a lot of SIGs say, we need help, we need help, we need help. But I've been there. I understand how scary it is to get involved. So I tried to take a step back and just like start from ground zero, right? Um, we want everyone and anyone to get involved, whether you're a no-code contributor or a code contributor, a complete beginner. Heck, we need a new logo. If someone wants to design some art, like that would be amazing. I can't do it. Um, maybe some of my other maintainers can. Um, so level one, you're completely new. Go ahead and check out some of the great Kubernetes contribution guides. Uh, they have really awesome information. For level two, you're still kind of unsure of where to hop in. Um, you can hop on to our website at networkpolicyapi.sigs.kates.io, um, read through our docs. Please find more documentation bugs. We are not docs experts. So it's mainly been us writing all the documentation so far, and we are developers. I cannot spell. Um, it's a problem. So check that out. Check out all our issues, of course. And then level three, if you're sitting in the audience, uh, you feel pretty confident with network policy, and we've missed something. If you have not seen us talk about it today, please, please, please open an NPEP. We are making our way towards beta, and the window will be closing in the next month or two to kind of add new features to the running list to get into beta. So please be thinking about that. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how you can get involved. This slide is attached to our link, um, as, as well as all of these links. Um, I think that's all we have for today. If you could please leave some feedback uh, for how we did, that'd be great. And we'd love to take some questions. Thank you so much. Oh, yeah, and there's a microphone right there, yep. Hey, uh, I'm Keith Maddox. I'm a Istio maintainer. I love the, what I've seen today about developer network policy. Very exciting. I wanted to ask, is there any openness for uh, something like service accounts to be able to fit into developer network policy? Open an NPEP, I would say. <laughs> Will do. <laughs> it, it, that is definitely something that has come up, um, and we just sort of haven't Prioritized it, I yeah. would say. Yeah, we would appreciate all the help. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, I think this was really awesome. Um, really like to see where this is going. One thing that kind of jumps out of my mind, though, with these out of tree um, opportunities is that it, it kind of makes me think are all of, like, after we potentially build up uh, momentum around all of these out of tree things, does that then open the door for a conversation about what Kubernetes v2 looks like? and those out of tree things become baseline in Kubernetes version 2.0 that I've not seen any you know, whispering about, but you know, more maintainers might, might know. It just, it, that, that doesn't come to my mind. There are no specific plans for Kubernetes v2, um, but this is something that people were talking about at the Contributor Summit is, you know, what does it mean that we're doing all this stuff out of tree and, and you know, where are we going API-wise and evolution? So, yeah, conversations are happening. And everything is CRD, right? Like pod and yeah. CRD. Like. <laughs> and, and I think it's important to think about, but like, w I feel like we're at day one. As you know today, many CNIs have their own APIs. It's so easy as a user to get com unbelievably confused with policy-related APIs because they all have network policy in their name. <laughs> so this is day one. Like, let's come come together as a community, um, get it all in one place, and then move forward from there. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. And having it out of tree helps us iterate faster. As a group, we're a small group, helps us move faster than the in-tree stuff like we were mentioning. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. Thank you. Sweet. I think that's it. Thanks so much, everybody. Thank you. Oh.